need to be the best investigators and problem solvers. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode today, I have a great guest. His name is Mike Orlick, and he oversees the revenue team at an amazing company called Transcends, and they're in a privacy arena, and I would highly recommend you go check them out. Mike has over 15 years, 16 years of SaaS sales experience working in different companies such as WalkMe, as well as the Transcend, and also several other companies which you probably have heard of. Let's let's talk about like what exactly is a use case to go back to to break down. I mean, we we, we see that we've used case studies, and uh, you know, in different levels. But I'm sure some sellers are listening to this. They're like, "Dang, Donald, you know, our company used in so many different ways." How would you define use cases based on your experience? I think you kind of did in your explanation there, but I think yeah, no, it's fair. Um, you know, I think uh, it really comes down to sort of the business outcomes and what they mean for your client. Okay. Right. So I think of, you know, like where, where I'm at now at Transcend. So we've got a privacy experience platform that helps companies give users rights to their data. So you can, mm -hmm. you can ask somebody to delete your data or send you a copy of the data that they have on you. And, and that organization can use us to automatically fulfill that, re that request you're making. You know, okay. I can talk till the cows come home to an organization about the products that we have right mm -hmm. we've got data mapping we've got privacy requests but the big focus for our team is instead talking about the outcomes and the use case of our of our platform and how that ties to this CFO or this CMO or this head of customer experience i mean a 100% on that i feel like and i i think the the arena especially in the saas world it is so tempting so tempting because no matter what you sell, you have people who are going up against you who are selling similar things. Like, yeah. And there may not be huge differentiators, but people will gradually go back to those features and benefits. Like, you know, XYZ software can do that. However, we can do this. And it's like, you're racing to a, a no man's land and I'm not going to leave my six, seven meetings and two of them that are double booked right now just to come and hear you spit that out on a demo. Like, yeah. so there's gotta be a compelling reason. And I think this is where at the top of the funnel, use cases could be effective. Um, why don't you talk to me about that? How do you utilize that at the top of the funnel um, in outreach? And then maybe we can go through some, you know, throughout the process about how we can, other ways we can utilize it yeah. in complex sales. Yeah, I, I appreciate you asking. I think, um, and this is a little bit of where the standing out from your, one of your previous episodes um, kind of combines with this use case conversation, right? Is, you know, the top of the funnel, um, discussion is such a hard one because every, you know everybody's hired their SDR or BDR organization or there are folks who outsource some of that and there are entire companies that have been built to help run that for an organization you know outside of your your own team and and yeah so they're getting the same message left and right about you know <laughs> privacy is important here and you should do this um, I think it's super important to take the use cases that you as an organization have established uh, where you have a, a leader position and start to think about the creative ways to look at contacts that exist out in that space, either in your EC uh, or excuse me, your ICP or, you know, the target personas that you're looking to reach out to. And you get to your earlier point, I think you might've mentioned it, but like you get quotes from the other VPs of finance who've had success with your product and you target all the VPs of finance in your ICP with a message from, from that, you know, that VP of finance, don't take my word for it. Here's a VP yeah. of finance talking about their use of this important use case of how we help solve a, a big problem for them. And, you know, it's really tying it, sorry, it's tying it back to that personalization. Like I know you have problems because I talk to people who have those same problems and I'm helping to solve them. I love this. And I think the other part, it's, it's so validating, right? When, because there's several, well, several pieces that we can unpack here and why this works better than, hey, our software is better than you, take a demo. Um, or better than competitor, hey, take a demo. It's, I like the fact that one, 
the salesperson isn't <clears throat> selling the idea really right i mean it's, it's really your your client that's selling it number two because of the the use case number two it's proven it's proven because you have other clients that are that said the same exact problems and and, yeah. I, and i one of when i sold SaaS, one of the things that i learned and i thought it was the most ingenious thing in the world was like you said just go back to the voice of the customer because so often when we when we do our outreach I used to, you know, we, we can help your organization go paperless. And that so, sounds great. We did document management. But then, this, but then the idea is, you know, I learned that CFOs, in, in this case, just keep picking on CFOs today. Yeah. They had, um, in some of these districts that we were going after, they literally had people walk around with, like, invoices to get signed by different <laughs> departments. And I was like, oh, my goodness. So what was re repercussion of that was that sometimes they would literally miss those those uh you know the early discounts that you get when you yeah. you know pay something on time or you get late fees and and these things added up for a district who's using government money so now when we were to speak to that particular use case it was like okay we've experienced that number two so there was some commonality <clears throat> with it and then the third part to that too is that it's like i it's like almost like I know that it's it's not just me. Like if I'm thinking about a prospect, they're not just thinking in my head. Oh, it's just us, or it's just our organization. Crap. There's other organization did the same thing as well. I'm willing to go sit in a demo on that because that's something that pertains to me. It's been proven, and this customer is speaking to me and not just the salesperson. Bro, there's a lot there. Talk to me. What do you feel? <laughs> did I get it? Hundred <laughs> percent. So no, no, you did. And I, I think you know it, it's interesting. I, I took a couple of notes down that I wanted to, to hit on for for the folks in your audiences. Yeah. You know, and I talked to my team about this. We need to be the best investigators and problem solvers. Go deep. You on just that. have to want. You just have to want to solve people's business problems. And when you mm -hmm. join an organization that has already proven it can solve certain business problems with certain use cases, right? Now you get to go into this engagement with your clients who, by the way, want you to tell them something about their business that they don't know, right? Like just super high level, yeah. how you get into enterprise sales is you get deep and you help companies improve their business. Yeah. And so when you join an organization where the company's already started to prove out use cases, already has a bunch of customers, guess what? We as sellers are talking to 25, 30, 40 people at any given time, depending on how big your org is, right? About this problem yeah. that this new prospect, you know they have because you're dealing yeah. with 40 companies who look and sound just like them. So you get to go in and say, look, I know you're dealing with this. I'll, I'll, I'll take my world you know, as an example. I know you're dealing with these ever-changing privacy laws on a constant basis. And because those legislations, because those regulations have come in just since kind of GDPR, so maybe the last four or five yeah. years, people have only solved it once or twice or zero times in their business yet. But you are talking to 40 people at a time who are trying to solve this issue and you know several customers personally that you're working with who are already solving the issue guess what we get to come in with this use case that we've seen a bunch of times that they're trying to handle for the first or second and be a trusted advisor if we ask the right questions we truly want to get to know their business and we truly want to solve their problem oh man dude <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. Listen, guys, if this is your, if you're listening to this episode, I need you to go ahead and save this one and come back to it and listen to it like every day for like a week. <laughs> if you're top, of, if you're trying to improve your top of the funnel outreach, you got to just go back and rewind the past like four minutes there. What Mike was talking about, and um, I promise you, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like worthwhile. If there's one piece of advice you want somebody listening to this episode to walk away with, you gave us some ways that we could go about doing this. But, you know, we, we chat about a lot here. Top of the funnel, use cases, how compelling it is, why it's so important. Um, what's that one major piece of advice you want them to leave with? I, you know, I, I think it's be genuine and, you know, have a real interest in, um, in uncovering and solving business problems, right? If you can't genuinely convey that, you're probably not long for solution selling when you're just going through the motions. But if you're yeah. an inquisitive person and you enjoy building, you know, real relationships, 
this can be an amazing place to be and you can find yourself solving problems for the biggest companies in the world ones that you're a customer of and you go into that experience and you're like that's there because i helped them build that solution to a problem that was mike orlick and yes use cases are tremendously helpful if you haven't done so already go ahead and figure out a way to utilize utilize use case top of the funnel for you and also throughout the sales process maybe you can upsell or maybe you can solidify the deal even more so so you can bring it in oftentimes what happens is this sellers grab a prospect's attention they've done something really great at the top of the funnel but then later on throughout the the you know maybe after the demo the deal kind of fizzes out try using utilizing use cases a little bit more to make them understand the importance or solidify that need to make that investment right now and with you and your organization it shows that you've done this before it shows you have experience and it shows that you can solve the problem for them at hand if you haven't done so please leave us a rating and review on apple Podcasts. subscribe to this podcast tell someone else about the show and also leave us a rating and review it would go a long way Thank you.